Yo, what up, YouTube? Well, I woke up on this beautiful Saturday morning, and I decided that I was going to make a repelling and fishing video. So, I called Scott, Scott met up with me, and we started our adventure. At first, I was trying to climb across this bridge, but the metal was super sharp on my hands, and my skin couldn't hold. Still, it's a cool short little video, especially with that train, beautiful sky, beautiful sun. That rust looks so cool, especially with the water and the trees and that snow. God, I love it. Glad that I can share these videos with you guys so you guys can enjoy this too. Now this video is going to be a little bit different. Because I had a plan. And yet I failed to have redundancies in my gear checks. Therefore, I managed to get myself into a pickle. So stay tuned to see how I got myself out of it. Had to go check on our old friend Steve. Poor fella doesn't have arms, can't brush himself off. Ran back to the truck, piled in, started heading north. Back to the bridge. This looks like a great spot for me to anchor. So I'm going to tie my knot, double check it, make sure everything's good, and then I'm going to send it. Who knows what kind of big fish I could pull out of this hole. I have no idea how deep it is or what lies within it. I love places like this because it's a land of opportunity. So down there to my right, there's a cliff, and it's got this pocket, and I think there could be a fish sitting in there. But also, I see a bunch of sticks that are stacked up on top of each other, and that resembles a beaver hut or a muskrat hut. So maybe the high traffic from those animals swimming in and out of the hut could scare away the fish. See that pocket? It's like a corner or a dihedral in the cliff. Now I'm just letting the rope slip through my hands. Then I gotta separate my two strings. Last time I got tangled in it. Had to tie this side off because I don't want my rope dragging in the water. I also have to be careful and remember which one is the sturdy knot. Oh yeah, gotta get that fist bump. This has been a great gree gree. I've had it for a couple of years and it only has minor grooves in the metal catch. Still got a couple more years in it. But who knows? Always try to have redundancy with your gear checks. Always try to double check, triple check everything. Grigri looks good. Time to go over. Going over the edge is always the worst part. But I love it. Whenever there's risk where danger involved. I always feel extremely alive. It's like everything in my daily life just goes away and I'm only thinking about what is happening in the moment, making sure that my movement is precise and perfect. I'd say for me, it's definitely a form of meditation. I feel most calm when I'm dangling from a little tiny string a hundred feet off the ground, or in this case, off the river. It's also a form of solitude that you can't find anywhere else. This is such a special thing, and I'm so glad that I get the opportunity to do these things, and to film them, and to post them on YouTube so I can show people. By the way, thanks for watching and stay in tuned, y'all. You're about to see me get myself into a pickle.
little kick off with my foot so we give us a little twirl this is always so gorgeous so beautiful sun peeking through the trees I loved climbing across that bridge. That was so much fun last time. If you guys haven't seen that video, go ahead and check it out. It's on my channel. So beautiful. Very blessed to be able to live in a place like this. That rust is such a pretty color. I wonder how those pebbles get up there. When I was climbing around up there, I found pieces of concrete and sticks and little rocks. Maybe kids are throwing them up there. I don't know. That bridge is an engineering masterpiece. I'd love to see a time lapse of it being built. Same with the bridge that I'm repelling off of and the one that's above it and the one that's behind it it's crazy there's five bridges within 150 yards of each other it's interesting one of my friends hung a high line from that bridge on the left to the bridge I'm repelling off of and they would walk across it they actually got on the news that was pretty cool Eventually I'll get into highlining, but I think it'll be a couple months. I also would love to get into wingsuiting. So uh, any wingsuit sponsors out there want to help a brother out? I'll jump off the top of Mount Everest in a wingsuit if Red Bull will sponsor me. Oh yeah! <laughs> I had to strip the audio to this video because I kept saying, oh yeah! probably said it like a hundred times I think it's because I watched Despicable Me the other night and there was a young fellow that had a squid gun and he kept shooting squids at people and every time he'd do it he'd say oh yeah just got stuck in my head alright now I grab my fishing pole I had it hooked onto my harness with uh, a bunch of quick draws I grab this little Tupperware put a Rapala two Panther Martins in it couple other hooks some sinkers Ooh, and a steel leader just in case I caught a pike especially in these waters you never know what you're gonna get could be a sucker fish could be a white fish could be a pike could be a rainbow could be a brown trout you have no idea what you're gonna catch I'm sure there's bass in here sunfish perch so many kinds of fish in here hopefully I can catch something I brought my ice fishing pole because I figured a big old, you know, six or seven foot pole would have gotten tangled in the line or it just would have been too much. So this is the rod that I chose. Did you see how nicely my rod fit into that carabiner? Just a perfect little holder. Grab my little nippers, had them in my pocket. You got to be careful with that because those nippers will poke holes in your pockets and then you lose all your stuff. I learned that from experience. Well, it looks like I'm almost all set up. Just got to grab some little wormies, put them on the hook, start fishing. I'm forewarning y'all, if you guys don't like graphic stuff, look away now. I'll tell you when it's all over. I love doubling up on worms. A lot of people say, oh, you don't need to double up on worms, or you don't need to put multiple worms on there, or you, you know, cut the worm in half and just put half on there. But honestly, with my experience, I feel like it stimulates the fish's attention a little more. And I tend to catch way more fish when I've got multiple worms on a hook. I think I put six on there one time. 
especially if you're like on a sandbank you can put a bunch of worms on that hook and you throw it out there let it sit on the bottom and just pop it up a couple of inches let it fall back down to the bottom pop it back up got the bass and the pike absolutely love that they will destroy them all right for the squirmish people y'all can look back no more graphic stuff going on trying to cast back into that pocket but I made a terrible cast decided just to let it sink it's pretty hard to cast with these little ice fishing rods and I also kept spinning around so it was hard I had to like swim in the air which is a weird feeling quite interesting not much matter to push against you also see me shaking my rod here, and that's just to get some extra line out so I can get my bait on the bottom of the river. But due to the current and not enough weight, my bait just drifted down and ended up sitting on the top of the water. Mission unsuccessful. So I kind of hung out here and fished for about 20 minutes and then my legs started falling asleep and uh, I started getting a little lightheaded. So I was looking down for my ascender and my ladder so then I could get back up and I realized that I didn't have it. Now I'm in what I like to call a pickle. So I don't have many options, but hey, at least I got options. And I'm also thankful that Scotty was there. Because otherwise, I'd probably still be hanging there. Since I don't have my ascender, I'm going straight to option B. Trying to cast my fishing line into a bush and get it snagged. So then, hopefully, I can reel myself into that cliff and climb to safety. Successfully snagged it. Reeling, reeling. Just wasn't strong enough. Boink. I went back down and I grabbed that fishing rod, but for now I had to focus on how to get out of here. So Scotty grabbed that other end and started pulling and letting go and then pulling and letting go so then I could swing over to this cliff and hopefully latch onto it so I can climb up there and get to safety. Took me a couple tries. Oh! <laughs> This cliff was unbelievably slippery, and it's what I like to call chassis, which is extremely crumbly and just not good rock, and probably rock you shouldn't be climbing on. It's also called bookshelf climbing, because it's like climbing on a bookshelf, using the books as holds, because you're just ripping them off the shelves. Same thing with all these rocks. You'll see I'll grab onto a rock up here, and it just pops right off. Feels sturdy at first, but you have to give it a couple of good tugs before you really trust it. Otherwise, you're going to take the quick way down. So I've never climbed this cliff before, so I'm really trying to take my time and make sure that I don't take a whipper. There's that rock I just popped off there. I've got to be really careful of my choice with the selection of holds that I have. Like I said before, this rock is very chassis. Doesn't mean it's not climbable, it just means I have to be extra careful. I was really teetering right here. Almost went back. Super glad I didn't.
having the snow on the rock is a totally different aspect. One, because you have no idea what's underneath of it, and two, it's extremely slick. I am so thankful for little bushes and little trees and little shrubs in the woods. They have saved my life so many times by me grabbing on them and stepping on them. Poor little fellas. As much as I rip on them, I love them to death. And I was a part of a uh, trail crew in Oregon, and we planted 28,000 trees in five days. It's pretty incredible. I've got my right hand on this branch of a sagebrush. And when I wrenched on it to get it up, I ripped the roots out. That was careful. Oh my god, it's a worm! I have no idea how it got there, but it did. Somehow. Fish food. Oh yeah, always gotta draw a smiley face. It's the name of the game, bruh. Successfully made it to safety. Oh yeah! Now it's time for Scotty's Repel. In the last video he did his first one, and now this is going to be his second one. The first one was probably 20 feet, now this one's about 110 feet. He was super excited about it, so I strapped the GoPro on him and sent him over the edge. Whenever you're tying knots, especially when your life depends on it, always double check it. Always. And if it don't look right, it ain't. See that? Don't do that. That was wrong. I'll show you guys how to do the 10 count to make sure that your figure eight is safe. That knot has no structural integrity to my safety. It's just to clean up the knot. All right, now the 10 point check. Ready? Two, four, six, eight, ten. That's a good figure eight. Now I'm gonna put some sweatshirts underneath this rope just to kind of protect it especially on that concrete down there it's pretty sharp all right now it's ready for a repel now old scotty has got the GoPro strapped on him he's pretty nervous but he had a hell of a time I did have to cut the audio because that boy's got a real filthy mouth on him <laughs> Maybe next time I'll have Scotty come do the voiceover for his part. That would be pretty funny. To the people who are still watching and have made it all the way through my video, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. You guys are the people that make this channel happen. Also, I was dead serious about jumping off the top of Mount Everest in a wingsuit. Red Bull, please sponsor me. GoPro, please sponsor me. I want to change our perception on human capabilities and human limits. I want to do crazy stuff. But I can't do that unless I got a little fuel and a little help to get there. So please, Red Bull, GoPro, please sponsor me so I can shatter the world record for height and speed for wingsuit. Please, please, please hit me up. All right, y'all. Like and subscribe for more. Peace.